So hello folks, it's Super Actual, uh, back again with some more uh, FSX, co FSX content, there we go, I can't get my lips around the word now. So we're uh, currently at uh, Belfast Aldergrove Airport in uh, Northern Ireland, and we're going to be doing the trip to my home base at Newcastle. So this is a trip flown about this time of night by the uh, A319, so we'll start getting boarding underway because we're nearly ready to rock and roll. Okay, so boarding's requested. And FSX freezes. How amazing is that? There we go, we're back. Just the time it took to spawn things in. So as you can see, we've got a decent load factor on the aircraft today with uh, 118 uh, passengers on board, 5 tons of cargo, 5 tons of fuel. Okay, so... GNT. No company routes, and the alternate is Echo Golf Papa Hotel. Flight number is EZ521. Cost index is at 85. And cruising altitude is flight level 210. Flight plan is pretty simple departure. Do the departure from runway 25 today, I think. Weather is fine. Boarding passengers now, that's brilliant. Temporary insert, there we go. Then proceeding to the Blacker Waypoint. Then Dean Cross. And then, uh, we're like, well, we'll just go. Actually, we may as well do it now because we've got some time. It's so PPD 01. This place bearing distance waypoint. So the place is going to be EG. We'll actually make it the Newcastle VOR. Newcastle bearing. 360, distance 5. You'll see why I'm doing this in just a couple of seconds. Uh, it's just, well, uh, well, not a couple of seconds, when, when we get there. And the arrival at Newcastle today, it, we can in install that because it's such a short flight, will be the ILS 25 approach. That gives us a total um, <coughs> distance of what, just 190 nautical miles total distance. Okay, performance, no sorry, anyway, it's um, Anish, second stage, five ton block, Perth, do the flaps for one departure today, because it's very slow V-speeds, quite a high D-rate, and going back to flight plan, so it's 33 minutes total time on route today, okay, and we're ready to close the doors. So the bags are into the last conveyor now. Oh, they're, they're gone. One thing I will do, uh, which I'm not going to cut the video for, is just do a quick weather check at Newcastle. A oh, quick weather check overall. So yeah, it's the weather. It's uh, apparently I hadn't, didn't have the weather at Real World, which I've done now. So a little bit of a drizzle at uh, Belfast. Okay, we'll close the cargo doors now. We don't want it to rain into the aircraft. Master switch start. We'll request push. So prepare for push and departure. And it'll be nose to the right, tail to the left from this stand. Partial clearance is requested. Beacon light can come on now. And if we go up to the overhead, that, 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 that can come on. Uh, okay, APUs now starting up. As we can quite clearly say, nothing much we can do until then except just switch that to that and wait for that to start the um, thing here to start. We can also do some of the before takeoff flows. Actually, we can get go into ground services and remove everything except ground power, which just generally means that. I'm waiting to, till we get the uh, APU generator coming online. There we go, APU is available. Your trucks, excellent power. Now we've now transitioned over to the APU. APU bleed comes on. And good bleeds are increasing on both sides. Right, we'll, we'll wait till we're getting pushed out and we'll, we'll start the number two. Engine first. Okay, they're gone. Lucky's locking the gear. So we may as well start the engine now. Whilst. 
Belfast, we'll lock Belfast via Walren and take Belfast on via Wall Pointer 1. Pointer 2 can, can, can come off for the time being. I'll explain why I'm doing this in just a few moments. I'll just zoom out slightly. Yeah, oh, it's quite a wide hook out. Towards Blacker. So, yeah. And, um, we're doing the single engine taxi out today. The nose wheel steering was disconnected because obviously the pin has gone in, which has uh, overforced. Well, just uh, takes control of well our control of the aircraft away, away away, as they say. So I believe two fives that run over that, which correspond with what we're seeing on the navigation display. And also, just a quick Q and H check. That's better. Uh, An initial altitude will be about 7,000. Operational climb. Auto throttle can come on into armed mode. And everything else is the way I want it to be. So. Actually, that was a point that we didn't make. See, that's. Those can come on like that now. And everything else, we'll take wiper both wipers on both sides. So we've got the drizzle. Well, it's, it's a bit more than a drizzle, but you know. Again, guys, I've got the audio muted just because uh, it's later in the evening now, and I don't want to be disturbing anybody else in the house. And as one as that. You've got my glorious talking to listen to, rather than the winding of a CFM 56. Fuck break, set and check. So get rid of that as well, because I'm not going to be using that during this trip. Hide menu bar. There we go. We've also got lots of really nice uh, internal views, which we'll actually we'll use that during this trip. Oh, I like that. I like that now. Get wheels. So got wheels. That te temperature is normal. So we lost some uh, some flight controls. We'll do a flight control check on the fly, as they say. I'm sorry, I'll do it on the fly once as once we start the number one up. There goes the tug. Let's go. Throttles configured today, so you can see I can control the throttles independently. I didn't realize I'd done that. There goes the tug. Bye bye, tug. Okay, is, it, is that him waving us off to? Apparently, that's what that hand signal means in the real world. Have a good trip. Okay, so we're just gonna. Uh, oop. There we go, aircraft's now rolling. We're just using the number two engine for the taxi out. Okay, we'll do the flight control check on the fly. This is actually how they did it when I was, um, oh, as, as well, more observant of you know, I just came back from a trip to the Czech Republic. And I know when I was uh, coming in to Newcastle, we had the uh, Thomas Cook A321 uh, leaving to go somewhere significantly sunnier than Newcastle. That's what I'm going to leave it at. And, um, they did the flight control check as they were taxiing. So trim's going up to 0 0.8. Which is not that fine. Whoa. Close to fuck. There go, that's 0 0.9. So I'd rather take more trim than less. Okay, we can now start the number, the, the number one engine. And take flaps one and on the spoiler. Quite narrow taxiway this. And Aldergrove has got uh, 747 capability. I would hate to take the 74 down this. Quite a high 
fire link power I'm using. Um, but yeah. So we'll do the flight control check. Full left, full right, centered, full back. A little bit of power. We've got both of our engines online now. Full back, full forward, center, full right, full left, center. Okay, that works. Now that we're um, closing in on departure, we'll pretend we're now cleared. So that light can come on to full. So can that light. So can that light. And so can that. APU can now come off. We're entering the runway, so that comes on. And that's just configured for the departure. No, it's not. Whoa, that's a sudden change. Oh. Yes. Copilot's just turned the lights on. We can also take auto brakes max. And do a takeoff config check. Which is e uh, landing e takeoff ECAM, sorry. No blue. Camera crew, please be seated for the departure. Flex. Okay. As you can see, we've got it. We've done everything that we need to do. So, and chronograph on. Anyway, right, road time. I'll grab the chronograph later on. We don't. I don't need it anyway because I've noted the time we, were, we came off blocks. Because the right gear up. What I'll do is I'll just get, um, I've actually got my hand off the throttle completely now. And I'm just, uh, sorry, the uh, joystick at some stages there. Okay, we've got to look at this. Yeah, you can see that the aircraft has absolutely no problem at this kind of weight taking off a landing at, uh, at a shortish runway at Belfast. Autopilot 1 on. That's the flag director. And throttle to climb. There we go. Climb. Climb. So what we can do now is just go to here. Check the wheels. So yeah, the wheels are all good. There's no obvious signs of a fire or anything like that. Okay. It's a climb phase. What are we looking at top of climb at being? Oh, uh, at blacker, pretty much. Within a minute of blacker. Or one mile after blacker waypoint. We'll be at 210. Almost immediately. Alright, and then at top of climb. Top of drop is one minute after Dean Cross. Um, I'm almost in the mood to plug a. Uh, clear that discontinuity. Just to see what that does to the top of drop. It, yeah, it's a minute after black, two miles after uh, DCS. So, uh, no, wrong button. Okay, don't do that just yet, because right hand flaps up. I'm going to just action the bing bong. Bing bong. That's the, now we've seen the cabin crew to their duties. It's got a lot to do in a very, very short hop. Okay, we're now disarm the spoilers, because we've just done that. Flaps are up. Gears down. Uh, gears up, sorry, not down. APU's off, APU bleed, that should have been off, didn't catch that. There we go, this is configured. So we'll have a really quick, I'm regretting not going to the external view during the uh, climb. Well, that's a glitch that's going to get reported. Uh, we've got the volumetric light effect, but I'm going to... Uh, yeah, so the nose taxi light, even if you're airborne, stays on. That's part of the... Um, Brand new FSFX thing. That's the turnoffs. Let's see, there you go, it looks normal now. Let's say this is the new livery, Airbus A319. I'm not quite sure who painted it, so I'm not going to risk getting it uh, the, the name wrong to credit them. Um, but yeah, it's on the Aerosoft forums. Okay, we'll take our next altitude of flight 210.
yeah. So, as I say, folks, thanks. Uh, well, try to on it. So this fight, I'm not going to. Um, on the last Fokker fight I did, I cut the video halfway through because I was um, airborne. And I thought, you know what, there's no point me kind of forcing you to go through watching me flying an aeroplane. Well, that's what we can do. I should have done this before the flight. Apologies, guys. Um, views. View bar. And then you can have your wing views driven the approach. Okay, I, can, I can do something like this. Okay, that's just glitched now. I think it's the VAS is just murdering itself. But yeah, it's, um, as I said, I've got, got the FSFX uh, paint scheme for the, sorry, the FSFX package for the A320 through PC, uh, oh, through the uh, uh, the uh, website I review for. So uh, that's why I'm using it. And it's very, very nice, I have to admit. So we're now go, just going to switch the windscreen wipers off. And that's purely on the ground that we are climbing up through uh, quite a... Well, going through 11,000 now, so the aircraft's accelerating. Landing lights are coming off. There we go. Strobes, could they stay on? That stays like that, that stays like that. There we go. Okay. I quite like this, these panel bars. But we, and we, uh, and as I on approach, we'll do a Category 3 ILS. Or I'll... Yeah, basically, we'll fly, fr we'll fly the approach from the external view so that we can um, look at all the um, the awesome effects because they really are pretty amazing. Uh, we'll get the contrails popping up pretty shortly. But the light, as you can see, are volumetric, which is uh, sometimes I don't like it, sometimes I do. I'm kind of torn between whether I like it or not. But uh, you see, you see, because the volumetric, it looks okay. But in the current situation of flying in, what's it reflecting off? Nothing. You know, it's that kind of thing. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry, folks. Uh, a little bit of a late night last night and a late night tonight. Okay. So, it's f that's 15,000. I'm not going to switch the weather radar on because I don't want the, the lag. So, but what I can do is I can wish the cabin crew to their duty. That I think everybody, well, I can wish everybody now, I suppose. So I reckon both those switches to automatic go to trigger a double bing bong. But the no smoking sign uh, is automatically stays on, and it clears the cam. So if, if I'm, you know, if I'm being a lazy pilot and I'm looking out the window and I'm going, "Ooh, that's quite nice. What's that down there?" And I just glance over here and I see that the e cam has a message on it. I know it's not something that's meant to be there. I'm not doing securing yet, but we can keep that up. Um, yeah. And also, folks, you'll notice I left the ignition in start mode. It's because we're taking off in what I deem to be heavy rain, because in FSX there's not much difference between heavy and light rain. So I just left it on, and that's because that means that there's a igniter firing constantly in the engine. That can now come off. That means the the igniters were firing. So if the engine had an issue on takeoff, uh, it was more likely to um, have a stall or something like that, rather than have a more major issue than that. Because I love the uh, 4K resolution textures. It absolutely kills fast, but I love it. Uh, I need to do something with my uh, settings to get because I had an OOM uh, last trip I did. Because I was doing it as I say, I, I went to a um, museum. Uh, yesterday, actually, so Saturday, and uh, it was the Trident reveal at uh, the Northeast Flight Sim Museum. I'll probably stick a link in the uh, description for Nelsam because it's very, very good. And the flights um, with the North, uh, NEFS Northeast Flight Sim Group, and we went down there and um, we had a few guys flying uh, with us, and I was just flying this around and end up having a uh, when, when, I, when I got the OOM. I ended up having the um, one of the pilots who was ex British, uh, British Airways. First flew to Trident's, then 75's. We just did a circuit at, um, at Heathrow, sorry, in the 757. I really wish I'd recorded it because uh, I've, I've got to say, very, very good flying on his part. Um, you know, after, after so many years of not being in the saddle, so to speak, and then uh, just jumping in and 
flying the 757 more accurately than I've seen anybody else do it, I've got to say. So, uh, big, th yeah. big shout out to him for that. Yeah, as, as I say, I'm going to be doing uh, quite a series on the Airbus as well. So the Airbus uh, A319, 320, 321, and maybe even the A318 into London City because I quite like it. Um, but yeah, and then just doing steep approaches and stuff like that. Here's the contrail. We'll wait till the proper contrails come, when, until they, they become a bit more pronounced. Which they, oh, they, you can just about see them. But that's, as you can see, that's not the default contrail for FSX. So it's uh, kind of creating them. Well, you, you uh, those of you who watched my triple seven streams, it makes almost like a love heart. It's a lot less pronounced with this aircraft for blatantly obvious reasons. Um, but yeah, so that's set up. That's that. That's that. Yeah, got that. Okay, what we can do is we can do our landing computations. So I'll get Topcat up again. I can't show you that on the stream for various technical reasons. Sorry, in the uh, video various technical reasons of the, sc the screen capture software that I uh, choose to use. But, uh, yeah, whoa, that was a bit of a bump. Obviously I use Topcat, which is uh, only has a package for the A320, but I find with the uh, A3, you can use the A320 pack for the, la the, the landing computation uh, and just tell it, you've got, you know, give it the weights of what you've got on board. And it'll go, alright, oh, yeah, I get that, happy days, and it'll work off that. Okay then. Okay, we'll do the landing computation for Echo Golf November Tango. We'll be landing 25N today, because 25 is preferential unless there are te uh, less than 10 knots tailwind. Uh, we'll get the weather in a few moments. But our present gross weight is 58 tonnes. And we expect to be land. We, um, we have 50. Well, aircraft weighs 58 tons. In terms of the fuel, we've got 3.9 tons on board. We expect only 3.1. That's 800 kilos lighter. That's at 58. So uh, 5770. Uh, five, Landing weight. So. 5. So yeah, it's a uh, quite a nice slow approach speed. Um, looks like we'll be able to get away with, uh, get away with using auto brake low. So you do need reversers on this approach. Because uh, another point uh, if you're using top cap uh, is that you can obviously enable failures. And if you don't want to use the thrust reversers, that's what I would do. Because it's the easiest way to calculate not using reversers. Yeah, got two engines in operative reverse, which actually means if we land with auto brake low, land firmly in the touchdown zone. So if I just do the landing distance reduction of, let's say, 400 feet by the time I've fled, because obviously you've got to remember that the landing computation gives you computation for you touching down, literally skimming the uh, ILS system or the approach lights. So you've got to remember that. Uh, so do. Yeah, it's. I don't believe that's going to work, but okay. Um, yeah, it should work, the approach reference, so. Um, yeah. What I'll do is I'll actually use the. I'll wait till we get a bit close. I'll wait till we're over the top of Dean Cross until I start doing this. See so yeah, how everybody's been released from their seats. That's just. Uh, fair of getting us to uh, Newcastle now. Apparently you do get quite choppy weather in this part of the world as well, so this isn't just completely fictitious. Um, I know I, uh, again I was doing, I did a course at Newcastle College in uh, aviation operations on the ground and the tutor was telling us that they did this trip with a number of cabin crew students uh, on a day trip to, um, it was yeah, well, Belfast obviously, and on the way back they went through a horrendous thunderstorm and that trip alone put about four or five cabin, uh, prospective cabin people on, on a cabin crew course, so they were obviously quite keen on being cabin crew, off cabin crew for life, because it was just that bumpy. So I thought, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, again, folks, you know, I, I'm not flying the uh, uh, 
NGX much at the moment. I'm also looking into using some other add-ons with FSX, such as Voice Attack. I'm doing some. I'm looking into that, into the perspective of using Voice Attack with the FSX, because then you wouldn't need FS to crew or FS Copilot, or Copilot, or anything like that. All you do is say uh, disconnect autopilot, and it would uh, disconnect the autopilot for you. So, uh, no, yeah, so I saw Frugal Sim do a tutorial on it for um, so, um, DCS. No, I did not think of that because of DCS VOR. Um, but uh, yeah, that's just an uh, idea for the future. Oops, yeah. What are those vibrations? Yeah, you can see the contrast a bit more pronounced now. I do not like the volumetric light because it's showing up in a condition where that's about. I'd make that about 10 malvis. We've got Orbex England installed, by the way. I haven't got Scotland installed. Uh, that looks like FTX Global, actually. Um, but yeah. Apparently, this light's volumetric as well and very low visibility. Never managed to get that volumetric yet, even though I was writing the review. And obviously the light, the dome, the beacon light, that's by default like that. And if you ever see a beacon light in an Airbus, it does look like that. Uh, but yeah. So folks, let's, we can take that out now and we'll go. Well, the first one we'll be using when we land is ground services, so we'll switch to that. That's configured as we like it. That's This is all set up the way we need it to be. Flight controls, we're not touching that because nothing's broken. Um, again, nothing broken on here. EGNT touchdown is 21:24. Present time is so we've got 20 minutes landing. So cabin crew 20. Um, actually, sorry, PA. Uh, cabin won't well, can't do it, but PA no. Cabin crew 20 minutes landing. Cabin crew 20 minutes landing. Thank you. That's given the cabin crew their 20 minute warning. So they'll start be getting the rubbish off the uh, uh, passengers about now. Uh, we should we'll probably actually trigger the seatbelt sign now because. Um, you know, to get to the passengers in their seats and give the cabin crew an easier time. Actually, there's no damage in doing it now. It just stops me forgetting it later. So, uh, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you can see, the fastening seat button is now illuminated. We should be shortly beginning our descent into Newcastle this evening. Uh, I'd just like to take this opportunity f f to thank you for flying with uh, EasyJet this evening. And we hope to see you on another of, of our aircraft in the near future. Thanks. Okay, so, approach prep. Landing light low. I'm now going to pull the weather by going to map mode because that's the easiest way to do it. I could use Active Sky next, but nah. Again, you can't see map mode, you can just see a paused version of the same. So please bear with, folks. So it's a, t it's a 10 knot crosswind gusting to 20. Visibility 48k. So. The wind is. Zero zero three at ten. So that gives us a five knot headwind. Uh, we'll actually make it fifteen because obviously the gust. Uh, eight knot headwind, thirteen knot crosswind. Temperature on the ground in Newcastle is seventeen. QNH one zero one nine. So just do the computations. So again, reference speeds one hundred and nine knots. Um, landing weight is five six. So five eight f uh, five. Seven, seven, zero, zero. Compute. There we go. That's a be that's better. Um, that's obviously without using reverses. We've still got five thousand feet of runway remaining. Um, I wonder if we went for config three. What would that do? It doesn't really impact the landing distance much, but it, it means we'll uh, be stopping later. So, config 3, we'll trigger the GPWS landing flap 3 warning up there. When I go to performance, and we'll replicate what we installed in the uh, top cap. QNH was 1019. Temperature was 17. No, no 17, not 7. Not great to be a difference, but deal of difference, but you know. And it was 003 at 15. Transition altitude is 6,000. And config landing is f flat 3. There we are. 
So visual approaches so now for, it's set to 135 knots. You can see we've um, what I if I just step through the. Uh, You can see I've got I put we put that waypoint in just north of that Newcastle, so that means we're, we're more spaced out. Because if we didn't have this waypoint in, we'd be coming straight over the top of the airfield, have a rather sharp turn. Now I was out and about with family today, and I actually watched the aircraft come over pretty much that part of the the uh, area, so it's uh, not too terrible. Okay, that's the aircraft fully plugged and wired for the landing. I know it's gonna it'll probably make the video a little bit more boring now. But it's because we've got um, because we've sorted out this soon. It just makes it so much easier for the uh, landing. Because I'm flying by myself. Normally, you'd ha obviously have a captain, first officer, potentially second officer, depending on who you fly for. It's just that load me, so I'd rather get it done soon, sooner than later. Okay. I can't afford to float on this approach, but so we'll go for the, the obligatory wing view. You can see the aircraft's got a little bit of chop going on because of the, the way the ailerons are floating. Alright, so just go through and cycle through. No, that's not working. We've got the telecam. Uh, you also, if we only, when we come on approach, we'll, uh, I'll fly the initial stage of the approach in approach mode. We'll come in here. I'll get slowed down nice and early for you. And we'll hopefully be able to see some of the condensation going on and things like that. Okay. Again, I guess apologies again for the textures. It's because I've decided to uh, fly with 4K resolution textures. And the aircraft's trying to render uh, an airfield in somewhere. Because that's the only time it does this is when it's rendering an airfield. Or it's close to a NOAA one. And we're not that close. We're, we're using one and a half me uh, gigabytes of memory at the minute, so that we're not that close to another one. There we go. It's probably trying to render um, Carlisle. In. But as I say, this is the, uh, this is the first in a series of uh, quite a few Airbus flights I'm going to be making in the uh, next couple of weeks. I'm looking to potentially do an Alicante uh, trip in the next couple of days, depending how the scenery looks, uh, or potentially even the Canaries. Mallorca, oh we could do Mallorca because I think they do, yeah, yeah they do Mallorca from Newcastle so uh, at least you do anyway. Or well, we could do one of the Thomas Cook routes, I'm not sure yet. I know I want to do Santorini, uh, but, uh, but yeah it's um, all in the future guys, all in the future. So it's currently 21 minutes to uh, Airborne, which is decently okay flying time. Okay, we'll scroll in the next altitude constraint, which is 2,500 feet, because that's, we'll pretend we've been cleared down to 2,000 feet to meet the approach criteria. So I'll wait till we're over the top of that. I might even get us to ascend a little bit sooner, just to make it more comfortable for the passengers. Because I, I don't mind being down two or three miles sooner than uh, we need to be. No, it'll help with the plan to get uh, some wind condensation effects going on because hopefully it's humid enough. Um, and I'm not changing the weather to what Aerosoft recommend, sorry, FSFX recommend to get the uh, correct textures going. Five miles to go. I'll probably trigger the uh, command, the uh, VNAV pretty much descent. Uh, when the um, uh, descent marker, top de that's the top of drop marker, enters into this area here. Uh, this isn't dis this isn't obviously an Airbus tutorial. I think there's plenty of those around on the internet for me not to have to do one. There we go, and going down. There's a, and there's a lot of commercial firms also offer it, so uh, we're descending a little bit on the early side, but no big deal. Making sure I haven't done anything wrong. That's the telecam. Oh, okay. Right, if I just, yeah, I'm going to stick to the internals. We'll come in. Uh, well, we're coming over the top of Carlisle, which is what Echo Golf and Charlie is. I can configure the Radnav page, I suppose, as well, because we don't need the Belfast VOR. 
what I'll do is I'll take November Echo Whiskey. Oh, and I have plugged in the ILS25 approach, yes, I have. So I'll just go, yeah, that's already plugged in there. And uh, into the other side, I'll plug the November Tango. <coughs> pardon me. NDB. It's just about giving me the most uh, information I possibly can get. That's 352. Um, and that's going to the uh, November Tango NDB. Uh, for those of you who are local, it's actually within the vicinity of Big Waters Park on the entry road. It's just on the left. Uh, yeah, random fact. I got bored one day at college and decided to try and find it. <laughs> uh, about 40 miles to go from Newcastle, but obviously we've got to hook around to the other side. So, um, yeah. Okay, 17,000. Cabin crew, 10 minutes landing. Cabin crew, 10 minutes landing. Thank you. That's about 10 minutes and 30 seconds, but. I want them in and seated for the iOS. And I've just jerked the joystick. Jerked the joystick. Jerked my joystick. Sorry, I really shouldn't have said to make jokes like that. It's meant to be a child friendly channel. Uh, oh well, that died long ago. Uh, but yeah, so that's obviously the only white Airbus uh, operated a dark cockpit philosophy where you uh, do not have any light on that you don't need on. Uh, which is why that's the only light because it's saying, hang on, are you sure you want to do this? I should take the backlighting light. I want the dome light off. Alright, I thought the dome There we go, dome light. Eh? I don't get this. Well, actually, but in all fairness, Landing it with the aircraft like this isn't that much darker, and I can still read absolutely everything. And it's probably better as, um, obviously, if we're um, going to be descending into a darker part of the world. And we don't want to be doing stuff like that. But you can see, oh, the NDB's just picked up, so we're getting rather close ish. That we're going to fly just out over the coast a little. Get rid of the terrain, because we don't need it. And there's no high terrain within the vicinity. MSA, from memory, is Cheviot, which is 3,500 feet, but that's about 30 miles north of the aerodrome, so it's no big deal. One of the benefits of flying to your home base a lot, you know the area. Okay, so we'll just do a quick cycle. Engines, they all look sensible. Uh, oil quantity is good, temperature is good, vibrations slightly higher on the left, but that's just incremental. N2 is higher on this side, though, for some reason. Um, bleeds, again, bleeds, all the PSI's provided have been good. Pressures, rotation panel. Cabin pressure is dropping steeper than I would like it to, uh, but there's nothing I can really do about that without fiddling and probably ruining the whole plot. Uh, next one's hydraulics. So hydraulics are pressurised at 3,000 psi. Brilliant. Fuel. Uh, that's good. That's good. We've got correct fuel for landing. APU not on. Conditioning. Temperatures are good. We haven't got any animals on board because we really generally don't fly animals. Uh, doors are closed and locked. Oxygen psi is good. Wheels, good. Flight controls, good. I mean, actually, I stick the flight controls on page on for the landing. And then on finals, when the gear comes down, it'll do it itself. Uh, it's just something to show you guys exactly what the aircraft's doing, even though the autopilot's on. But no, on, on finals, what it'll do is it'll just switch, uh, flick over to the wheel page. And more drag. Sir, asked for more drag, I think. And that's the, fl the uh, spoilers flaring up. The aircraft just dove, dove down through a hole in the clouds. I've got to say, uh, since I've switched F16 edition, I don't know what I did to it, but I installed something which uh, just made the whole thing so much smoother. I mean, I dreamt of running. Obviously, I don't have the greatest flight sim rig, but running at you know, 15 FPS stable in the um, uh, yeah in the A3, A3 uh, in the Airbus X is just unreal. And I'm using 4K textures on the aircraft, so uh, that's the time you can see over on the right. See butts run, yeah, that's the main thing. That's don't whoa, yeah, that's the emergency light test. So with all the emergency lights work, we, we'd, be, we'd run that test if we uh, were suspicious whether a light worked or not. Speed brake still out, so you want me to retract the speed brake now. And engine's increasing. What did I do to cause it to do that? Yeah, it's about hidden. Oh, um, 
what we can do is we can just go to the uh, this view. That looks even more horrible. Come on, Flight Zero. I've just been telling everyone how good you are, and now you're just letting me down like this. About past five miles north of the aerodrome, but we're on about seven or eight miles that way, roughly, well, that way, due east of here. Um, you know, it's one of the beauties of coming into Newcastle. As, as I said, I know the place like the back of my hand. We'll switch the ILS symbology on. There you go, see, 11 DME on the ILS. Because the ILS on both ends has the same frequency, so I'm not sure which ILS receiver we're, at, what we're picking up. Most likely the one on the 07 end of the runway. That's why you're getting glide path indication, even though we're more than a oh, sorry. 120 degrees out of centre line. This is quite a bit of trim. Yeah, that's 6k, so pressurisation. 998 QNH is. So I'll just. Yeah, I'll make that, that adjustment a little bit. But that can come on. That can come. That can, uh, we're not going to go to the view and look at the nose, so I can leave those on. I'm not going to switch the approach lights on. It's long enough. Sorry, the APU. It's long enough taxi in to make a single engine as well. Okay, we can zoom down to about 10 now, we'll make it the 20 mile range, which will go 10, uh, which is a lot more precise. Obviously you can see the November Tango uh, NDB, that's how far it is from the um, final uh, the runway, and it's obviously just under the ILS, it's what's the, pref the, the, prefer the preferred nav aid for Newcastle now, because in the real world, NEW is now defunct, I think it's a DME, and that might even be going pretty soon. Because you can, you know, all the approaches to Newcastle is to an NDB approach. Hmm. Wish you can fly with the DME from the ILS. And, uh, you know, that's literally all you need. Um, so that looks like that's the airport. So that's the Blythe. And that's the ones back, for those of you who know the area. Uh, again, just transitioning to the, what's the spine road somewhere along here, A1, somewhere below us as well. Again, folks, apologies for the uh, lack of, well, the, just the blurries in general. But we've got the airport, and the main thing we're looking at today, obviously, is the um, absolutely brilliant FSFX package, with obviously the few glitches which we've just discovered during this. Oh, why did I do that? During this video. Performance. We've got the ILS. Uh, oh yeah, decision height is two. It's actually what's one hundred feet. So should I switch the audio on. It's got my headset, isn't it? Okay. Apparently, I've mute, somehow muted the whole setup. That's terrible. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, decision height's a hundred feet. Not a thousand feet. A hundred feet for radio. It's obviously the category two at Newcastle. We haven't got cat threes yet, apparently. Category two is the only thing that's available. Um, the aircraft now wants to slow down to VRF. So, as far as I'm concerned, let it. Uh, we'll also uh, well, well, we'll wait till the aircraft flies the turn to final. What's that looking like in terms of the lineup? Oh right. Yeah, we're still along. That's the open cast over there, I think. Cloud pop, cloud pops in there. Obviously, using 4K taxes takes the toll out of the rest of your sim. Flaps one. We'll take over manual airspeed control anyway. So I'll take 180 until I'm in, uh, established. Which I could just keep going and do now, couldn't I? Yeah, we'll just. We'll, what we'll do is we'll just let it 
the let it take over using localizer mode. I'm up a lower glide path now, so uh, I wish we could have split screens in the Airbus. But I can't wait for um, the A330 to come out by Aerosoft because I really want to do long haul Airbus, but there's nothing to do it with at this stage. Which what we can do is we can arm approach mode. That's the Blythe, yeah. This is literally the, the part that, uh, that's Newbigin down there. And I was sitting about there, and watch this aircraft come straight over the top. So, uh, totally agree. Um, with my prior judgement anyway. So we'll just go for the 90 degree intercept. That shouldn't be there. Aerosoft, if you're watching, I don't think that should be there anyway. Which it could be. That is just kind of, we will be level by this point. But uh, that's, yeah, that's Blythe coming over the top of. It's going to be quite a shortish turn in, but. And obviously, I'm just going right click. Which I'll just do a flitch change down to 2000. Take flaps 2 now. I'll take gear down when we get closer in. Okay. Uh, again, folks, apologies for these blurries. It's not normally like this. I know people always say that, but it really isn't. I'll look out my side window. Yeah, the airport's hidden behind the first officer's headrest. By the looks of things. I'll just I'll approach mode. The aircraft will do a turn in probably. Once I get local line, if I slow to 160, then final approach speed. But until then, it's just kind of a uh, 35 minute flight now, so we're about, um, well, we have two minutes longer than we anticipated. So apparently, it's got the localizer now. Yeah, it's the lineup of all the, those nav aids does indicate as such. This is a bit. So we're just making the turn in the south now. So I've got a 160 now. I've come bring gear down. And the flaps configured for landing. So actually in approach mode, I'll just engage command B. And we'll fly the no. So I do it through here, didn't I? Hopefully this is humid enough for it. Um, there we go. This is just configured for the landing. If the aircraft falls out of the sky now, I'm just gonna cry. I will join the crime myself, obviously. Actually, the angle of attack won't be high enough. That's the right speed now, so I'm just going to bring it 138. I want 40, that'll do me. Usually you get a uh, the, at least the contrail coming off the left vein. It'll just to give me an idea of airspeed, altitude, and things like that. So yeah, 140 knots now. If we get if we degrade below that, you can see we've got yeah the gusts are there. I think what we can do is we can go to box one, and then if we end up getting that, oh wow, this is going to be fun. Yeah, I'm kind of glad I went for the higher approach speed now. I've just disconnected the other by the way, because obviously you can't see or hear any of that now. Um, I think I have anyway. It doesn't feel like the rudders do it. It's the aircraft's doing much in response to my inputs. Because I don't want to drift to the uh, right, the left, of the, yeah, the right of centre line too much, even though that's obviously a crosswind from the right of about 10 to, t 10 to 20 knots. Uh, varying, which is actually quite challenging weather, I suppose. No, not humid enough in Newcastle. If I just regenerate the weather, sorry, folks, I just really want to, I really want this to work. If I flew a go round and uh, abused the go round, it would probably generate in, but. This is just so frustrating that when I do a flight and I set it up hoping for FSFX effects to work and they just don't. Okay, crosswinds are 16 knots now. 
and the aircraft stabilized itself so well. Whoa, that was a bit of a destabilization. Uh, there we go, we're down, a bit of a firm touchdown. Right, the aircraft's got itself in the way of braking. It's obviously what going to take over with um, yeah so apparently yeah the top cut see it's it was reasonably accurate actually in terms of predicting what we'd end up managing to do on this approach and vacating here so GSX that's one of the, the one things I do not like about Steam is it maps to exactly the same controls as my GSX and FSX freeze because I know how much you all love watching my FSX when it's frozen. This is probably going to just kill it completely now. Oh no, apparently not. It just jitters. Server side doesn't exist anymore, GSX. It's Aviator. They do the but, but I've got to say though, at least it's got the right ground handling agent, not Swiss Ball. Okay, that comes off. That comes off. That goes to that. That goes to that. That goes to that. That goes to that. That goes up. That's good. Um, once we get APU available, I should just check the wheel brake temperatures because obviously we used minimum wheel braking. Yeah, 230 degrees. That's without even breaking much sweat. Um, APU? Not available yet. When the APU becomes available, that's when we'll switch the other engine off. We're going to be entering the stand now, so taxi light to off, off please. Thank you. Yeah, obviously, uh, the point I haven't discussed is these in the in the real world these stands have Agnes. Well, a bit fast. I wish there was AFCAD mapping for that crossy stand. Cause that's the one they use in the Airbus coming in here. And external view. Because, again, when you learn to marshal, apparently, the, one of the first things they teach you is don't stand in a stupid place like where he is. He's standing in what's called a stupid place. How, how am I meant to see him from my position here to him under there? There's what's called a radome in the way. But anyway, since I've got the, this set up, I'm going to break the carnal rule, and I'm going to go for a power check in the stand. With, and I don't care what goes behind us, quite frankly. So I just do the power check as I said I would, and hopefully we'll get the nice effect. Do you see the effect there? Right, what I'll do is I'll hold it on tow brake, and I'll just advance the left-hand engine, so the number one. Just tow the lock, tow the power, sorry. And you get the effect versus the, the the other side, hopefully, again. You can see that effect there. And that is one of the things that, obviously, uh, FSFX have brought, brought in. Also, there's apparently a thing that it's, um... If you're just flying the, um, if you're on, if you, you drop the landing gear, apparently you see brake dust fall out and things like that. But I've never seen that, so, uh... They stay on. That comes off now. Okay, we'll quest deboarding. I've cut the engines, thank you very much, sir. Alright, apparently I've done some deep down muting because I can hear the steps coming. Where are the steps? Does it think this is an average stand? Anyway. Anyway, folks, so thanks for watching. Uh, it's been a pleasure on this, this uh, rather short flight, sadly. Yes, we know you want to offload. So this is it for me on the first uh, Down to the Wire series with the Airbus. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you all in the next chapter. Bye-bye.